Harry. That is responsible for today's reading of the second advent candle you will see that at the end but because of who we are in Jesus Christ I will light the second candle of advent today I light the second advent candle Amen. John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. This candle was lit as a symbol of Christ the way. May the world send from God, may the word sent from God through the prophet lead us to the way of salvation. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Thank you all for your patience. You know, technology is a wonderful thing when it works. And when it has its glitches, these things happen sometimes, but God is still good and we are still happy to be here this morning. Although a little delayed, we're excited. A special thank you to the family that did do an Advent recording, the Igwe family. That will be up on Facebook after the service has concluded. So we want to thank them for their participation this week. The Advent devotional is also going to be posted after the Facebook Live video this morning. So we're so glad you're here. If you are a first time guest with us here on Facebook Live, or if you're watching later on YouTube, we encourage you to identify yourself in the chat on YouTube or in the comment section on Facebook so we can recognize you. Our First Church family is excited that you are here. It is not an accident that you came this morning, and so we praise God for you. We give God all the praise this morning. We hope that something happens in this service that blesses your socks off in ways only God can. Happy Sunday. God bless you. Amen. 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 It's, it's good, good to be back, back in the house of the Lord. Lord. We, we know, know that this is just a building. And, and we are the church. We are the church that continues to do the work of Jesus Christ. Just, just a few, few announcements this is one of the people that are in prayer. Um, don't, don't forget, forget Tuesday, Tuesday night, Tuesday night, night at 7 p.m. to um, tune in to our church wide service. It's, it's on Zoom. Zoom. We, we have sent you the link. If, if you have not received it, please call the church office tomorrow or Tuesday. And we will make sure that you have it to join in on our business meeting on Tuesday night. You also have been seeing an advertisement on Facebook and um, YouTube of the office we have in the church. And I personally know that you're not going out for Christmas shopping. So we want to help you with your Christmas. Shopping this year. We're asking you to give the 
the gift of breathing. And if you could just call us and um, let us know how many books you want. Give a book to all your family members. And we will make sure that you have it before Christmas. So we're asking you to purchase the books and give them as a Christmas gift. Thank you for all that you do for our church. Thank you for your offerings, your tithes, your presence when we were outside. Thank you so much. Thank you for your presence on Sunday. Tune in to YouTube and Facebook. We really, really appreciate it. But even more than we appreciate it, God appreciates it too. Let us start our hands and pray. Gracious and holy God, before you this morning in our hearts are wide open, absolutely no secrets are hidden from you. We thank you, O God, for you brought us through the Thanksgiving season and now we're into Advent. And O oh God, we see your mercies and your miracles every day. Every morning in your first song, you, we give you thanks and praise. Despite Corona, on the other side of Corona, on the other side of the pandemic, God, we thank you. Thank you, God, you blessed us, you allowed us to continue the ministry of the church. Realize, O God, that the ministry is on the outside of the building. Lord God, thank you for giving us the opportunity to minister to those who are on the outside of the building. Thank you, God, that we had space enough so that we could offer testing to a wider community. God, your mercies are so steadfast, and your love is shining upon us each and every day. We open our hearts and our minds so that as we go into the service, we will focus on you and in you alone. You are our creator. You are everything. And so today we give you praise and we give you glory just for being God of our lives. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Praise the Lord.
I'm wondering where to begin this morning. We're the second Sunday in Advent. We really didn't have a Black Friday like we are accustomed to. I think Black Friday started two weeks before Black Friday. And the department stores were, and stores were not open on Thanksgiving Day as they usually were. Wow. In some of our states, they're locked down. Hospitals are overflowing. They don't know where to put folks. People are getting sick. Our lives here at the church to be tested for the COV-19 is long every day. Donnelly, Sister Mother, she will tell you, we come in and we look out the window and the line is way on the east west highway. And by 12 o'clock, am I right, Peter? By 12 o'clock, they're already had enough people that they will test for the day. The walking line to be tested is beyond the fire station that sits at the cross of us and wraps around. It's a new day. It's a different day. It's a day we have never seen before. And we don't know how to handle it. We don't know what to do. Wear your mask, wash your hands, don't just wear one, but wear two. Stay out of busy areas, and if you have to go, stay six feet apart. And still, we're scared because nobody wants to die. Amen. They tell us it's airborne, so we don't know in what direction or how we can get this disease. All we know, we have to be super careful. And I have the nerves to stand before you this morning and say to you, are you ready for Christmas? More cards will be mailed out this year than ever 
because we have the time to do it. Have you brought presents yet? Have you mailed a present since we began? Be together. Last week, I was talking to a member who lost a sister. And we touched on this time and she said, Pastor, I miss coming to my church so bad because of what I miss most is the hugs from the people. We can't hug. So when did you start a year? When did you start Christmas? With the tree and the gifts and the parties and the party, where do you start? And in Mark's gospel, Mark had faced similar dilemma. He had a huge task before him. God had inspired him to write the story of Jesus' life. And where does one begin to tell the wonderful thing Jesus did? There were the miracles and the teachings and the sayings and the celibate act of blood. Matthew and Luke started with Jesus' lineage and his birth. And John went all the way back before creation. But Mark began with John the Baptist. John was a boy crying out in the wilderness. Get ready for the king is coming. It was his job to get people ready for Jesus. He told the people to straighten out their lives so Christ would enter their hearts. And the people listened. They came from all over to hear him and they respond to his message. Those who were in the streets and the thieves and the tax collectors and many others came and they confessed their sins and they repented and vowed to turn from their wicked ways. And John told them, I have baptized you with water, but there is one coming after me who is so much greater, and he will baptize you with the fire of God and the Holy Spirit. Earlier, the question, where do we begin with Christmas? I so easy for me this year. <laughs> we begin with the cross. Amen. We should begin where Mark begins his gospel. By hearing the voice crying out in the wilderness, not in the malls, not in the traffic, not in the hustle and the bustle, not trying to get the hand of a turkey, but a voice crying out. Prepare the way for the Lord. May he straight his path, whose birthdays we celebrate anyway. It's Jesus. And we should concentrate on him first. COVID comes with a lot of stuff. But there is another sign to COVID. And if you have a change since COVID, here comes your opportunity. COVID has given us the opportunity to have a right relationship with Jesus Christ. The same way John's congregation prepared for Jesus, we should prepare our hearts for his arrival. We should confess our sins and repent by turning our sinful ways and our acts around. We should straighten out our lives and get right with God. We don't have time to have bad feelings against someone. We don't have time to talk about things that are not real, but we ought to be putting our faith and our hope and our trust in Jesus because guess what? Today could be our everlasting. That's not what to say now. This is real. If you have not repented of your sin, now is the time. 
If you have never asked Jesus into your heart, now is the time today. Just say, Jesus, I am a sinner and I need you in my heart to be my Lord and Savior forever. Get ready to celebrate Christmas like Christmas ought to be. Christmas, the birth of Jesus. And you will be also ready to allow him to come into your heart. You may have asked Jesus into your heart years ago, but God always has an indefinite of mercy and grace for us to experience in Christ Jesus. Ask Jesus to open up your spiritual path in your life. Dedicate yourself to service. Dedicate yourself to his will and his way. Then get ready to experience God's love in a new and profound way that you will never have before. At this time of the year, we all have a golden opportunity to be, to feel closer to God. We all have an opportunity to sing, oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. We all have an opportunity to sing, joy to the world, the Lord is come. Do you want to feel closer to God? Do you want to know the real joy of Christmas? The joy of Christmas is not found in the hustle and in the bustle of material preparation. It is the joy of knowing that God has sent a Savior, that your Savior has come and is coming again. Get your hearts in order. Get your hearts in order. And think that you need God, I don't care who you are. We all need God, and we all need to draw closer to Him. God bless you. God bless you that you're still well and you're still with us. I hate to turn the TV on because I don't want to hear how many people's lives are lost in our state or our neighboring state. Are you ready for Christmas? Or are you getting ready for Christmas? You see, when John had baptized the people, he said something astonishing to them. He said, I have baptized you with water, but one is coming after me, John, that will baptize you with fire and the Holy Spirit. Do you want to be baptized with fire and the Holy Spirit? Something about you had to change. Something about me had to change. Something about us had to change. I'm sure that most of the people whom John baptized were visible mood. Many had just been in greed for the lives they really were happy. Like some of us. But John said, This is nothing compared to what the Messiah will do. In a moment, I will give you an invitation to your altar. Your altar is right in front of you. Your altar is where you're sitting. Your altar is where you are right here. I'm giving you an invitation to that altar. I'm asking you to prepare your hearts and your mind to accept Jesus. I'm going to ask you to come to the altar. My altar is right here. Come to the altar with me. Confess and ask God to show you a new doubt of his mercy and his love. We're not talking about the law anymore. We're not talking about getting the right presence. We're talking about celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. If you have never given your life to Christ, come right now with me and do that. Come before Christmas catch you unprepared. 
and you miss the real joy of what it's all about. If you already given your heart to God, come again. It's a new season. It's a new day. We will never go back to the way we were. I don't want to go back. I don't know about you, but we will never go back because I want your heart and your mind to be prepared to walk with God. I shared in a meeting last week that I don't want to start with 2021 the same way we're coming out of 2020. I want the church to have a new love, a new joy, new grace, new mercy, new faith. So if you come to the altar, come today, or just pray where you are. If you can't sit, if you can't kneel, but you just can touch who is sitting next to you, who back with them, do that. Start a new beginning, make a new path. Make Jesus priority in your life. Prepare to worship him. He will fill your soul with love. I promise you. You see, because there's no more anything else. And you will know the joy of Christmas in the way you have never known it before.
God, we're all not at the same station, but wherever we are, this is where you have us, and you will accept us just as we are. Thank you for your mercy, thank you for your care, and thank you for your love. Whatever is on me that is too much for me, I'm releasing it to you right now. Because you told me, oh God, that if you can feed the birds of the bees and make the lilies bright, you surely can care for me. Thank you. Thank you for Christmas, where we have the opportunity to ready ourselves to accept the birth of baby Jesus. You are more than a in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen. right and a good and joy and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you father almighty creator of heaven and earth and so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven we praise your name and join their unending hymn holy 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 lord god of power and might heaven and earth are full of your glory Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You deliver us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by word and the spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks. Gave thanks to you and then he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples and he said take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me and when the supper was over he took the cup he gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples and he said drink from this all of you this is my blood of a new covenant prepared poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me and so in remembrance of these your mighty act in jesus christ we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith christ has died christ is risen christ will come again Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ come in his final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. The body of Christ given for you, the blood.
price given for you. It's just a few of us here, and we're serving communion to those who are with us. Just to let you know that, please stop at the church. We have communion ready for you. We have kits ready for you for the next, the next four Sundays. Watch night service. You can stop and pick it up at the church. Amen. Continue to leave your hearts wide open for Jesus to enter. Walk with them every day. Listen, we want to hear from you. Call us at the church. This is my second home. I'm here. <laughs> Don't you hear me here every day, too. I'm here. We're here every day, you know. And, uh, so just give us a call. Even Saturday. Don't be surprised if we answer calls. Amen. We're here because. We're committed. Donovan told me, I think it was Wednesday, we had a serious conversation. She said, This is my calling. What I do is my calling. It's the difference between a job and a calling. This is our calling. God has called us into oneness. And we want to make sure that we communicate with you, that we're open, we're honest, and that we keep the church alive. God bless you. Now, yeah, let's, let's be ready for benediction. Now, may the grace of God continue, continue to be with you. May you walk out to your friends, your friends and families. Open yourself up because, because you never know when an angel will look at you. Be good to someone. Oh, my Lord. Because, because God, God is always so good to us. us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My sisters and my brothers, will you go in peace? Know that God will never leave you or forsake you. Amen and amen. God bless you. Amen.